Cedar Park, Leander, yes. So this, everybody is starting to move out there, so <laughs> Muslims included. Um, Muslims, of course, coming to Austin. Um, they could either be people who converted to Islam, who, who were, you know, but most of them are immigrants. Uh, their children, of course, I say most of them are immigrants, but their children are not immigrants, are they? I don't know. Right? So <laughs> they're not. They're actually born and raised here. Uh, we had a friend. Um, the same way that there's misconceptions here about the Muslim world, there's also misconceptions there about America. So people uh, in the Muslim world think that Muslims in America are, are being rounded up and oppressed and persecuted, and this is the image that they have, and that because uh, they get just a lot of negative news. They think, oh, Americans just hate us and want to kill us and are savages. It's a, you know, it's unfortunately that there's misreflection both ways. So we have a friend from Egypt in Houston. So he called his family back home and they said, how's everything? Everything is good. I said, yeah, I have uh, four Americans staying with me also at the house. They said, what? You have four Americans? Watch out. They might steal something from you. He said, those four Americans are my children, right? So, so, so and it's not, it's not just that they're born here. I mean, they, they uh, watch American football instead of watching cricket or soccer or whatever it is, right? So, and they, you know, express themselves um, with the, uh, a lot of the American philosophy uh, and dynamic as well. So, um, I'll, uh, just continuing on. Uh, we also have some Islamic schools. So with the growth, and as Muslims increased in number, began to settle more, they said we also want to have a place where uh, children can be educated in a Muslim environment. We have two uh, major uh, Islamic schools here in Austin. As, uh, uh, as you heard earlier, we have Austin uh, Peace Academy, uh, which was the first Islamic school here in Austin, Texas. We also have the Renaissance Academy. These are, you know, math, English, science, etc. But in addition, they learn Arabic um, and Quran and Islamic studies. Uh, so uh, it's sort of a reaction that a lot of the sort of parochial schools have towards a public school system. I personally went to the public school system. So I, I, don't, I don't know why everybody says it's so bad, but maybe it's gotten worse or something. Maybe it depends what school you're in. Uh, but Muslims also um, have a similar sort of response. It's like, what's going on in the schools? And they get a little bit protective and say, well, let's send him to an Islamic school, and he'll be a nice boy. And of course, it's not that easy. <laughs> or a nice girl. It's a lot more effort than that. As well, there's sort of specialized uh, programs. One of them is called uh, Darul Uloom, uh, which these are students who are homeschooled, but then they come to the mosque here, and they actually memorize the whole Quran. Uh, that's their full-time study. Uh, from 8 until like 2 o'clock, all they're doing is memorizing uh, the Quran. It's uh, 600 pages <laughs> in Arabic, verbatim. They start from age of five. Some of them are done. Uh, we have one who finished. He's about nine years old as well. So, of course, there are many more other educational and social and civil, uh, civic groups, uh, very active. Uh, for example, if you guys are interested, I know it's really late notice, but um, tomorrow there's a Texas Muslim Capital Day uh, at the state capitol. Uh, the legislator is opening up. So you will see Muslims from all over Texas there and different Muslim organizations coming to, you know, advocate, you know, the causes that they feel strongly about, etc. So it's a very diverse community with very diverse interests. Um, and at the same time, what we will present in this course is the binding for all of the Muslims, regardless of where they're coming from uh, or what their particular perspectives uh, may be. Um, you know, politically or, or how we should be as Muslims in 21st century, etc. So any questions about the Muslims here in Austin, Texas? This is your chance. Yeah, so the, it, each year it grows. So Austin Peace Academy uh, goes from pre-K uh, all the way up till high school. It's a lot heavier at the lower ages and then uh, uh, slimmer at the higher ages. So there are less high school students, a lot more younger students. Uh, I think, uh, Brother Alex, maybe 200, 204 at Peace Academy. Renaissance is probably a similar, similar number to that. And it's growing. Um, and uh, more and more 
uh, Muslim parents are interested in sending their, their children to those schools. Uh, there are a few non-Muslim children who attend those schools. Most of the time, they are uh, children of the uh, teachers uh, who may be teaching there. So we have a mixture of teachers, of Muslim and non-Muslim teachers. Um, and so they're, they're very uh, interesting sort of evolving uh, institutions uh, in America uh, with each year they develop, uh, in my opinion, they're getting better and better. So um, I hope that answered your question. I think, yes, yes, both of them are accredited now, yeah, yeah, are accredited. All right, anybody else has a question about Muslims in Austin? All right, no problem, no problem. You have Muslims in Austin all around you. Don't get too scared. They're not going to jump you or anything uh, unless they want to give you a big hug. I don't know if they're going to give you a big hug. Um, but Texans, Texans are known for their hospitality, right? So Muslims are also known for that. So we have, it, it works, common ground. I was in College Station last week, and I was walking around uh, Texas A&M campus. By the way, y'all are probably wondering, what is he wearing? This is called a thawb. Uh Sometimes I wear this, sometimes I wear pants and shirt, but most of the time I wear like this. So I was walking around the, the enemy's campus, um, <laughs> the Aggie campus, and I was dressed all like this. And so a young man, 19-year-old, whatever he was, you know, it was a Friday night. I'm sure he was going to go to get, uh, we're not going to talk about what he was going to go do. But uh, he was just so happy. And so howdy, howdy, howdy. Right? So I was like, okay, howdy. You know? So, <laughs> so um, yeah, so don't, don't be shy. Inshallah, we're all, uh, inshallah means God willing. Inshallah, we're all just here to, to get to know one another. All right, so <clears throat> um, I'm going to jump right into the topic then. Um, and talk about Islam in a way maybe that most of us, even Muslims, may not be too familiar with, but is actually a Quranic uh, approach uh, to Islam. So Islam, those who say that Islam does not mean peace, well, they technically are correct because that's not the literal translation of the word Islam. Islam means to surrender uh, or to submit to the one God. Uh, this is the one that we believe who has created all human beings, who is infinitely good, uh, infinitely good, all merciful, ever merciful. And so Islam is that a person aligns their whole being with his will. That's what Islam is. Um, at, the, as, at a universal level, this is what it means. And so in doing so, one attains peace. So the connection to peace and Islam is that by submitting to uh, the highest and the only supreme reality. Uh, we, in Arabic we say Allah, which just means the God, right? The one God. This is the same one God that uh, sent revelations to Abraham, to Moses, to Jesus, and to the Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him. It's very clear in the Quran. It says to uh, tell uh, the Jews and the Christians Ilahuna wa ilahukum wahid, which means our God and your God is one and the same God. Right? Um, of course, there are people who uh, try to argue with that, but again, this class is kind of unique because it's being presented from the Muslim perspective. So uh, I'm just stating what uh, is there in our own text and our own uh, tradition. Uh, so also, <clears throat> um, this surrender brings about peace, but also freedom. So freedom, of course, is a, is a very popular, world, a popular word in, uh, you know, in America and uh, since, ever since the French Revolution. Uh, the idea about Islam and freedom, because some people, even Muslims sometimes, thinks that, think that they are uh, somehow in opposition to one another. The concept of freedom in Islam is that a person by surrendering to God alone is free from being enslaved to anyone or to anything else, including one's own desires or oneself or another human being or um, some false uh, systems or ideologies or whatever it may be. So in terms of dignity, a person might say, oh, you Muslims, y'all are slaves to Allah, right? So actually here when we say we're a slave to God, or slave to Allah, 